Alright fellas, welcome back to the channel. This video, I got a lot to go over on this guitar that I just freshly picked up a few days ago. This is a Jackson KV7Q. Uh, this is the 2020 brand new model of the uh, Signature Series. I'm not going to try and butcher uh, Corey's last name because I never get it right, so I'm just going to leave it out of there. You guys know what I'm talking about. Dude from Trivium. This is his Signature model, the Pro Series. Um, the moment I saw this, when they released pictures of this, I was like, man, I just like fell in love with it because it was different. You know, it has this really, really nice color, this uh, winter storm it's called. So it's like, man, I, I want to give the guitar a shot, you know, eventually, whenever uh, that might be. Just on a random search, I came across somebody on eBay that was selling it, and it was priced just ridiculously low because I was not going to, like, street price on this guitar is $12.99. That doesn't include your taxes and all that kind of stuff. Considering the reputation that I have experienced with Jackson, not everybody else has, you know, any, anything that's past, uh, like, the 2000 era. Once uh, Fender took over and uh, took the production on with uh, the more recent Jackson models. Um, along the way, I can, re I can recall um, a good handful of guitars. Not only that I played in stores, but also just uh, some of them that I bought, I gave a try. And, um, yeah, there was a lot of uh, QC issues, to say the least, on just about every model that I ever picked up after 2000. All the uh, early 90s Jackson models were just amazing guitars. And just things, just sadly, are not what they used to be. So we're going to get into exactly, um, you know, what's going on with this guitar. I will give credit where credit's due. This guitar sounds amazing. It plays great. definitely no issues there but the issues themselves are definitely on the guitar there's a lot of stuff that got overlooked on this thing and I want to share that with you guys and this is no you know, I don't want to like uh, offend the Jackson fanboys and stuff out there but you know I used to be a Jackson fanboy myself and you guys have come to my channel and have seen me you know talk about Jackson I was in love with Jackson guitars there was a time where I did not want to play anything but a Jackson I wouldn't even look at anything else on the shelves when I go to guitar stores um, ESP, Ibanez's, you name it, all the other metal guitars or any other guitar in general, I wouldn't even make eye contact with unless it was a Jackson. When it was a Jackson, that's all I looked at, that's all I picked up. And then, like I said, some of my bad experiences that I had, it just rubbed me the wrong way and I, I've, I don't have the same um, positive opinions, I guess you could say, on Jackson ever since. Actually, the previous model that I had, I had the USA version of this and um, you guys may have seen it in a couple of videos you know, a few years ago. And that thing had all kinds of issues. But let's get into it because I'm just going to keep talking. I could talk about this shit for days. I really could. But while I still got a little bit of light left, I want to show you guys what's going on here. And I, I will uh, provide some pictures too, depending on how it comes out on this video. But we are going to get into the nitty gritty with this stuff right now. Um, actually, I'll use my phone right here so I can flip this sucker around. So we're going to start at the top. We're going to start at the uh, headstock. Let me flip this around. So the first thing that caught my attention when I first got this guitar was right in this region here. If this thing will... There we go. Now this, I'm, I'm thinking it's paint over spray and somebody at the factory just kind of smeared it in and said, whatever, no big deal. Nobody will notice it or nobody will care. Like I said, none of this stuff affects playability whatsoever, obviously. It's all cosmetic, purely. Um, and then we have some, uh, this this nut here does not sit flush. It sits nice over here. Actually, it's a little bit recessed back this way, but it's a little too far hanging off this direction. And there's this was not rounded off too well in here, so actually I can catch my finger right in there. So you got a nice little just unfinished edge right here. And then we get over to, let me flip this guy around flip it over I should say then we got this right here going on if it can focus pretty please now this I can catch my finger on also yep right there and it goes all the way through on this side comes across and then finishes this way it's really hard to get this thing to, there we go all right that's better now what I think that is is maybe it they chipped it when they were moving it around 
and somebody just said, you know what, we'll just throw some epoxy, throw some glue back on there, stick it back on there, and call it good. That's what I think happened there. And we'll move over this area. Hopefully I still got light and you guys can see this. Um, this might be a little bit tricky. Let me do real quick. Let me plug my light in. This light is brighter than holy hell. Yeah. So we might, yeah, we should be able to see it now. Let me flip this guy around. That right there, just you can see all the sanding marks from the sandpaper, or even the whatever, if they were using a palm sander, however they were doing to get this nice and smooth back here. Well, they clearly missed all this here. And this seam is kind of gaudy, kind of janky. I'm not really too happy with that either. But yeah, that right there is, um, yeah, you missed a spot, buddy. Missed several spots. And then back here, these things I can kind of, I can, I can let these slide, like, in these areas. I understand that this is probably a pain in the ass to try and make look really good. I mean, I'm sure they had some ways that they could have made that look better in there. As far as just sanding it properly and, and whatnot. That input jack, God, that's in a bad place. That's another thing, too. And now I'm, like, washed out in here on that other camera. Holy crap. Yeah, this here... So now we got this possibly bumping in your leg. You got to be really careful when you go to play this guitar because that thing just will bump in your leg a lot of times if you're not careful, if you don't watch it. But let's move on to uh, the body. We're down there. Actually, no, we're not there yet. I got quite a few rough fret ends on this sucker too. Flip this around. <coughs> Let me adjust the... Uh... Let me adjust this camera a little bit. <coughs> oh, bless me. Okay. So this fourth fret right here, definitely got some razorness right there. This side's okay. Good, 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 good. And then we start getting right here. Oh, yeah. Every fret right here. Sharp, buddy. Same thing on this side. Ooh, that doesn't feel good. I could shave my face with that. Like, that is just, it's, it's sloppy, man. I'm not, I'm not happy about that. That's one thing, man, I just, I, I don't think should fly, especially with this price point. That's the other thing. Like, some of the issues that I've pointed out so far on this guitar, I haven't even seen on a $300 guitar. I know you're going to get, you know, not every, not every guitar is going to be perfect when you get it. But if you're spending $1,300 on a guitar like this, now if I would have paid full price for this thing, oh, yeah, I would have been all kinds of pissed off. Yeah, I would have been flipping chairs over, I would have flipped the couch over. I would have been real upset, man. That's just, this guy who sold this guitar, he was probably unhappy about it, too, if he, if any of this stuff bothered him. I mean, like I say, it sounds great. I'm not taking away from the way it sounds, the way it plays. I mean, both of those are covered. That's good, especially considering, you know, what I got it for. But, yeah, I would have never paid street price for this. I would have been so pissed off. This shit's just, it's, it's unacceptable. And I feel, what's great about this, my channel, you guys come here, 100% transparent. I keep it real. Keep it 100% with you guys. Like, if something's not right, I'm going to tell you guys about it. That way you're aware of it before you make your decision on, you know, where you want to spend your money on what kind of guitar. Just just be aware that this stuff is happening. And it's happened more times. I've had more QC issues with these later Jackson models than any other guitar that I've that I've picked up uh, in, many, you know, recent years or even back then when I would just pull them off the rack and play them. I've seen nothing but issues with these now. And uh, not every guitar is like that. I mean, not everyone has the same uh, issues as I have, the same experiences, but I just want you guys to be aware of that. So that's what you guys are here for for this video, and that's what I'm uh, you know, showing you guys with this guitar or any other guitars that I may pick up along the way. I, I want you guys to see this stuff so you're aware of it. But let's continue on. Uh, the routing... Uh, you can, it looks a lot, trust me, in person, it looks a lot worse than that because I can only get this thing so far in here. But yeah, it's, um, it's a little rough around the edges in both of these right here, especially this one. Um, there's a little, yeah, you can see a little bit going on right there. Just a little better care in the finish work uh, could have went in there, in my opinion. And you can see the uh, dripping. The paint kind of ran off right there, and I don't know if that's oily, like where the paint wasn't completely mixed, and it's a little bit of oil separation right there. That's what I think that might be. 
there's a little bit over here it's kind of hard to see yeah it's it's kind of hard to see i can only do so well with this camera uh let's see what else are we we have to go over i'm trying to remember now there was um there was two dings on the on the wings uh unfortunately on the tips this one this one wasn't too bad right here yeah you can't even really see it let me flip this around yeah this one already kind of took a little bit of a beating but you know i, I can find a way to camouflage it. i can deal with that that's not a big deal um yeah this is this is just kind of i i honestly before i even got the guitar i kind of expected that all right what's going to be wrong on this guitar because uh my dxmg that was the first post uh 2000 jackson that i owned that was yeah the jackson dxmg when i got it man the fret inlays were falling off of it and it had a really hollow just sterile like buttery kind of sound it just it didn't, uh, it didn't have the girth that it needed, even after I threw uh, an active pickup in it. It's just nothing saved it, so I sold that one back in the day. Um, that green, my green machine Jackson, that one's not perfect. It's got some pretty nasty um, imperfections along the binding of the uh, fretboard, along the neck. Uh, there's, there's a couple other things, like the paint inconsistencies, like the nut, that nut isn't uh, perfectly flush. There's, there's issues on that one, too, but... What saves it's the way it plays and sounds. Same thing with this guitar, you know, for how much I paid. I mean, I'm willing to let a lot of this stuff slide just considering how much I got it for. But, yeah, I mean, the other, and then, of course, the one that I just mentioned when I had the USA version of this guitar, uh, every fret end was, was a razor blade. Um, that's no bullshit either. Like, every fret could cut your finger open. It was, it, yeah, it was not a good, uh, not a good job. And then, like, some of the, I was getting, like, uh, problems out alongside the fretboard, too, where the, the clear coat, the paint was uh, coming apart, and there was discoloration. Just things were happening to it. So it was it was unfortunate because, especially that kind of money, you start getting into those USA models. Luckily, I, ha I got that one for a good deal back then, too. But, man, I mean, I think those were going for three, three and a half, four grand, something like that, brand new. You know, this... It's unacceptable. It's sloppy work, and none of that shit should be overlooked. Like, that QC definitely needs improvement, and this is why I'm sharing, you know, this video with you guys. Um, let me know in the description. I did do an unboxing, but you can tell that my enthusiasm wasn't all there. I mean, it's kind of a boring-ass video, to be honest with you, where I just I didn't say much. I guess I could, I could obviously overlay, or I can cut a lot of that stuff out where I was just kind of sitting there just, like, in a state of disbelief, like, oh, my God, you know. Um, but I do have that raw unboxing. If you guys want to see it, um, just leave me a comment. Let me know, and I'll do what I can to, you know, slap a video together of that and upload it so you guys could check that out where you can see when I first unboxed this. But, yeah, I mean, again, these pickups sound great. Um, these are those uh, Seymour Duncan Blackouts. I think it's the AHB1s, I believe. They sound awesome. And this is that uh, – this has a Floyd Rose 1000 series. I mean – the build of this thing is great. It's, uh, I think this one's a mahogany, I believe. Well, it's a neck through mahogany. It might even be alder, but I, I believe it's mahogany. Um, yeah, you got your 24 extra jumbo frets on it. It's got the ebony fingerboard. I, uh, yeah, I just, I got to get it set up too, because right now it's just in standard tuning with, uh, I think it's got to set up um, 10 to 56s or something like that. Just, yeah, they're kind of loose strings, and I just, I don't like B-standard tuning, I never have. Same thing, a lot of you guys ask me uh, about C tuning, how come you don't have a guitar in C? Uh, that was another tuning that I just, I could never come up with anything, or I never got inspired to figure anything out with C tuning, drop C tuning, and same thing with standard B. It's, I don't know what it is, I just cannot come up with riffs in those tunings. So I never have a guitar with those tunings. So that's that, and my ass is rambling pretty bad. I'm running out of freaking light, too. So, uh, yeah, as always, um, I appreciate you guys watching this stuff. Yeah, I had to move because this camera's doing some weird things, and it was being a little distracting. But, um, no, I appreciate you guys as watching, as always. Like I always mention in my videos, you guys are freaking awesome. Really, really appreciate the support. I hope this video helps you guys when you guys are deciding on where you want to spend your money on your next guitar or in the future. Just be aware that these things, these things do happen. 
it's unfortunate that I have to uh, discuss these things because Jackson was, I was just, like I said, I was such a huge fanboy for Jackson. I still have a big sweet spot for them because I played so many of them, you know, growing up and uh, especially my like early years of guitar, I just, I played nothing but Jackson's and they, they've slipped a lot. Jackson, you got to get your shit together. You got to, you got to make things right. Needs improvement. Let's just say that. But yeah, I, I hope this video helps you guys. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Guys, take it easy.